Dear students, today we are starting a new lecture series on nanoelectronics. This paper is included as a core paper for 8th semester B.Tech Electronics and Communication Engineering students of Kerala Technological University. Okay, there are six modules. In the first module, we are going to cover the introductory part, then characteristic lengths in mesoscopic systems, classification of nanostructures based on the dimensionality, then density of states, and basic properties of 2D structures. Then in the second module, we are going to cover different fabrication methods like epitaxy process, oxidation, ion implantation, salt gel process, etc. Then in the third module, we will discuss about the tools used for visualizing nanomaterials or nanostructures, electron beam microscope, atomic force microscopes, transmission electron microscope, UV spectroscopy, etc. In the fourth module, we will cover 2D electronic systems, MOSFET structures, heterojunctions, quantum wells, multiple quantum wells or MQW, then chronic penny model, etc. Exam point of view, this chronic penny model is very important. Then in module 5, we will discuss about transport of charge carriers in nanostructures under electric field and magnetic field. Then in module 6, we will see different nanoelectronic devices like MODFETs, RT diodes, that is resonant tunnel diodes, RT transistors, single electron transistors, then quantum bell lasers, quantum dot LEDs, photo detectors, then principle of nanoelectromechanical systems, that is NEMS. In this session, I am going to explain about uh, what is nanoparticle, then why nanoparticle is good, what is surface area to volume ratio, etc. First of all, what is a nanoparticle? Nanoparticle is any material having at least one of its dimensions in the range of 1 to 100 nanometer. A nanometer is 1 billionth of a meter, that is 10 raised to minus 9 meter. So, in order to understand the nanoscale, let us have a comparison between macro, micro and nanoscale. Let us take some examples for macro. The height of an average person will be around 180 centimeter, which is equal to 1.8 billion nanometer. Then an orange, which is the size of 8 centimeter, it is equal to 80 million nanometer. Now we can take examples for micro scale. Approximate size of human hair is 80,000 nanometer. The smallest thing our eye can detect or see is only 10,000 nanometer. The size of E. coli bacteria that will be in the range of 2 micrometer which is equal to 2000 nanometer. Now let us see the nanoscale when compared to macro and micro. So here the diameter of DNA is only 2 nanometer. The size of hydrogen atom which is in the range of 0.1 nanometer approximately. For the understanding purpose we can take another example and the simple example. If someone asks you what is nano, then you can tell them it is equal to 1 rupee in 100 crore rupees. So here the 1 rupee is nano. Okay, 1 rupee in 100 crores. There is a scale difference. And now you can understand how small the nano is and materials with small dimensions. It shows new physical phenomena collectively called as quantum effect quantum effect in nanostructures. Why we need nano? What is the advantage of nano? When the size goes down, the surface area getting increased. Okay. And the advantages are, the nanoparticles are faster, then it can be lighter than the bulk material, and it can get into the small spaces. One example is, if one patient is having a drug, okay, anti-cancer therapy drug. Some anti-cancer drugs cannot enter into the human cells because of the size. But if we have the nano size material that can easily enter into the tumor locations, so it can easily get into the small cells due to the nano size. That's the advantage. Okay. Another advantage is, 
it will be cheaper than the bulk material and it is more energy efficient and when the size goes down it will express different kind of properties okay now we can discuss about surface area to volume ratio whenever we talk about nano everybody says that surface area to volume ratio getting increased what is surface area to volume ratio we will take a simple example of a cube with 2 mm size the same cube can cut into 8 small pieces of size 1 mm now we can calculate the surface area for this cube this one that is height multiplied with width multiplied with number of sides for this 2 mm cube surface area will be 2 into 2 into 6 that is 24 then for 1 mm cubes there are 8 1 mm cubes height into width into number of sides into number of cubes there are 8 small cubes that is 1 into 1 into 6 into 8 answer will be 48 ok now let us calculate the volume the volume formula is height multiplied with width multiplied with length and multiplied with number of cubes so the volume for 2 mm cube will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 1 there is only 1 cube ok so the answer will be 8 then for 1 mm cubes there are 8 small cubes the volume will be 1 into 1 into 1 into 8 8 small cubes ok the answer will be 8 so the volume is same for both the cases then when you calculate the surface area to volume ratio between the 2 mm as well as 1 mm you can see that the surface area to volume ratio for 2 mm is only 3 and surface area to volume ratio for 1 mm cube is 6 so it is getting increased ok as the surface to volume ratio increases a greater amount of substance comes in contact with the surrounding material when we cut the 2 mm cube into 8 1 mm cubes hidden surfaces are exposed it can interact with the surrounding material effectively and it will have more reactivity ok now we can discuss about the properties of nanomaterials the properties of materials can be different at the nanoscales for two main reasons first point is that nanoparticles have a relatively larger surface area to volume ratio compared to the bulk material we have seen that ok nanoparticles can make materials more chemically reactive and affect their strength or electrical properties the second point is that in nanoscale quantum effects can begin to dominate behavior of matter we will discuss more about quantum effects later ok let us see the origin of these properties here you can see in bulk metal the conduction band and the valence band they are lying very close so here the unbound electrons that is free electrons it will have motion that is not confined in the case of bulk material then when you decrease the bulk metal into nano size what happens is that there will be a separation between the valence band and conduction band so here the unbound electrons motion it will become confined and quantization sets in material properties vary with the size of material take the metal gold as an example it is shiny yellow metal commonly used for making ornaments and jewelries when it is a bulk it is an inert material when it goes down to nano size its properties are going to change the gold particle of size between 30 to 500 nanometer it is metallic ok and the color will be between crimson to blue if the size goes down to 3 to 30 nanometer it will become red red color particle and still it will have the metallic property and it will be transparent if the size goes down to 2 nanometer or less than that it will be like orange in color and it will be non-metallic ok so from metallic to non-metallic and from red color to orange in color in the gold cluster when it goes down to atom level there is around 1 amp strong it will become colorless ok so the same gold in different size and different shapes it is giving a different kind of color and different metallic properties we can understand that when the bulk material goes to nanoscale it is showing different kind of properties 
we can also see that other properties such as melting point could be changed melting point is a physical property its reactivity properties are going to change chemical properties then the electrical properties there is a conductivity rate it is going to change then mechanical properties so during the making of nanoparticles the nanomaterials will have high strength and efficiency then the optical properties are also going to change it will have different light emission properties in nanometer range let us see the difference between nanoscience and nanotechnology nanoscience is the study of nanomaterials their properties and related phenomena at the same time nanotechnology is the application of nanoscience to produce devices and products one example is quantum dot quantum dots are semiconductor nanocrystals and it will have different kind of fluorescence properties with respect to the size if we are using the quantum dots and we are studying the physical and chemical properties then it is nano science okay then if we are using these quantum dots and making led tvs that is called nano technology we are using the application of nano science to produce devices and products okay i am concluding this first lecture that is the introductory part we learned what is the size of nanoparticle and we have learned about why nanoparticles are good or better than the bulk material then how the properties of the material is getting changed with respect to the size we also learned what is surface area to volume ratio and why it is better in nanoparticles in the next lecture i will start from the topics mentioned in module 1 of your syllabus okay thank you